All right, so let's get another volume of Mushoku Tensai out of the way, shall we? And, well, this was a surprising one, especially after reading this one. I'm really hyped up to see uh, what Volume 12 has to offer us. I honestly consider Volume 10 and 11 to be the same volume, just split in two, in all honesty. I don't have any way of confirming if there were originally one volume that got split into because of, well, publishing. But I have a feeling they might have been, or at least they're so close together they feel like they have, as they have this really good internal flow between the two of them. Okay, so let's uh, let's trace back our steps to remember where we were last time. For those of you who don't remember, Rudy's sisters, Asha and Norn, had arrived to live with him towards the end of Volume 10. And, well, a bulk of this volume is dealing with Rudy as he figures out living with the two girls as this is the first time in their lives that they've, well, lived together, as, remember, he was kicked out of the house by Paul to go teach Eris right when the two were newborn, so he really doesn't have that much time with them. And when he reunited with them, well, he gave Norn a bad impression, Aisha a great one. So they have very, two, very, two di very different uh, conflict the foot the ideas about their sibling. I cannot talk for some reason. Let's start off with the sister that's the easiest to define, Aisha. For those of you who remember, Aisha reunited with Rudy earlier in Volume 6, where he saved her and her mother, Lila, from their kidnappers when they were held hostage by the creepy prince who wanted to do the R-word to Roxy. Uh, basically because of this, she develops a massive brother complex on Rudy, basically worshipping him as a near god, and wanting to live with him and work as his servant as she was basically raised to become Rudy's servant her entire life. Here she finally gets what she wants, being able to choose her own path by Rudy, she wants to, well, be his maid, not something that she was forced onto by the way she was raised, but just out of her own general reasoning, wants to become Rudy's maid, and live under her big brother. And then we have Norn. For those who don't remember how Rudy reunited with, Yo with Norn, she walked in on Rudy in Volume 5 when him and Paul were fighting each other. This leads to her hating Rudy because, well, Paul is all she has in the world, and Paul really didn't do a good job of explaining what exactly went down. However, she eventually becomes... Well, afraid of him after learning how violent he is, well, after learning how powerful he is and seeing him as a violent person, as well as literally everyone that she knows hyping him up. So a lot of this story is Rudy trying to build a bridge between the pair and, well, her having a massive inferiority complex considering, well, her siblings. Yeah, inferiority complex. So after Lila and Ice are reunited with Paul... The sisters begin to live with each other again after being apart for so long. However, Aisha was constantly looked down upon as Paul's bastard child, so as some form of revenge against the people who looked down on her, she decided to outdo Norn at everything. This led to Norn basically being compared to Aisha in every way and growing despondent as the two were compared more and more. And, well, this gets worse when she realizes her elder brother is also a genius. So she's left as the normal one between a genius sandwich. That is the that is the Grey Rat siblings. So you can kind of see how she would basically begin to mirror Rudy more, or at least Rudy's past life, as she's tired of the comparisons between herself and her genius siblings. And, well, as she gets to the school, as she decides that she wants to live apart from Rudy and being in the school is probably the best way to do that, uh, she hears even more about how great of a person Rudy is because the school has become, well, Rudy obsessed in his own way, thanks to Rudy's growing reputation in said school. Oh, as a bit of a side note, I find it funny that the reason Norn stops being so scared of Rudy is because eventually... She starts, he starts to remind her of Paul, remembering Paul when he was at his lowest moment and seeing Rudy when he tries to connect to her in a similar position. So, yeah, she connects to Rudy eventually, 
because, well, she reminds her of her dad. Which makes sense considering, you know, Rudy is Paul's son. Even if Rudy doesn't feel like he's Paul's son because no nope, reincarnation. So while most of the book is taken up by the sister drama, we have another Turning Point chapter. For those of you who don't remember, Turning Point chapters are when the shit goes down. Okay, so one big thing that's revealed in this volume is that Sophie is now pregnant. Despite mentioning how it'd be difficult for her to have kids because of the elven blood, Rudy manages to make it happen. However, at the same time as this joyous news, Rudy is given a letter from Paul saying that, well, they need backup. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is the fact that Paul has found Zeno's location at the bottom of a massive labyrinth, and that's why he sent Rudy to live, that's why he sent the sisters to live with Rudy, so that they'd be safe while him and the party investigate said giant labyrinth. Now, the letter is very concerning for Rudy, because he has no way of confirming its accuracy. He doesn't know if Paul is indeed in any danger, because it takes a long time for news to travel in this world, considering the fact that, you know, they have to rely on handwritten letters and people traveling from locations instead of, you know, instant communication like the cell phone. So there's no way of confirming if the letter's accurate or not. And, well, he's not the only one worried. Norn hears about this and becomes immensely worried and puts pressure on Rudy to go save their parents. Because, well, she's a daddy's girl at heart and she wants to see her mother. So saving Paul becomes a priority, or at least helping Paul. Not to mention, there's Sylphie giving birth, as he doesn't want to be there for the birth of his first child. So, with the pressure from Norn, worrying about Paul and Zenith, and just wanting to confirm the situation around Zenith, him and Elenice set out to make their way across the world to go help Paul, and make it back in time to see Sylphie give birth. And the latter half, or latter portion of the book, is their journey through the desert on their way to go find Paul. Overall, I have to say I enjoyed this one, and forgive the pun, another major, another major turning point in Rudy's life has just taken place, obviously. As we saw in the last volume, Rudy has basically gained everything he wanted. A lovely wife, a nice home, and friends he cares a great deal for. He settled in and developed a more adult life compared to what he was living before these chapters or these volumes. He's living the best life he can right now and settled down in a good way. So having something come and uproot this, such as something major as his father needing his help to save his mother, would be what it would take to get him moving on the road again. And, well, yeah. It is kind of painful to see Rudy leaving all he's worked for behind because he just needs to confirm something, but the adventure is calling and Rudy has to go meet it. So Rudy's off to go save the last member of his family once and for all and welcome a new one into the world. But we'll save that for the next volume. Mishoku Tensai continues to be probably one of the best for any Sky series I've read for in quite a while, and just a good story in its own right. And I greatly look forward to reading volume 12 when I eventually get my hands on that one. So I will see you all next time.